Hey guys. So, I am once again driving using my hands-free device. Um, it's like a 20 minute drive, so I had some time to kind of like, um, you know, share some thoughts with you. So I was speaking to a student inside the mentorship program yesterday. And, you know, he, he's really great at getting opportunities on the calendar. So meaning that, you know, he's really great at booking calls, people who want a lot of help from him. The challenge that he has is getting people to sign up. It almost seems like for him that the people either really want to work with him and they're like, okay, I'll pay, I'll pay whatever your, 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 um, your rate is right away. Or they say stuff like, you know, yeah, I'm interested and blah, 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 blah. So even the gentleman, um, he has done a really great amount of money. Like he's gained about $16,000 per month since we started working together. But with the amount of opportunities and the size of the clients he's been talking to, he should very well have added an additional um, probably about $8,000 to um, $16,000 more in deals that are kind of being like either slowed down or held up. So, you know, um, and be quite honest, like inside of the mentorship program um, that, you know, with, with him, you know, we were we were riding the wave of like all the times like when you're really good at sales you can be really really forgive um forgiving when you're not closing a huge amount so for him he was closing at a pretty good uh clip and for the size deals he was getting like he got a couple of um you know he got two five thousand dollar deals and he got like um like a nine thousand dollar i'm saying talking about like five thousand nine thousand dollars per month right so it, it's it's like it, it's really good sized deal so we were kind of just like kind of resting on the laurels a little bit um because he was growing but then he um he came back from like from like a mouth surgery and now we're like looking at all his opportunities we're like whoa all these opportunities still haven't closed and then he was like yeah so i said okay dude we have to like go and, and start really looking at your sales process again because i mean yeah yeah we showed you how to sell we showed, you, we showed you how to get opportunities on the calendar. Now we need to go back and make sure that these opportunities where the guy said, you know, like, yeah, I'm ready to get started. Just give me a couple weeks. We have to make sure that from now on, that's not happening. So over the next probably like two weeks, we're gonna be really looking at his, um, looking at his sales calls. So one of the things I have uh, people do whenever I'm inside of the mentorship program and then we're working together is I have you actually record your sales calls and then actually send them to me, um, both the ones that work and the ones that don't work. So we can review them together and say, okay, cool. This is where you lost the person at. This is what you actually should be saying to get them to go. This is why that person said, you know, they're gonna be ready in two weeks. And it was really cool and really interesting to talk to him, right? Because there's, there's really three sections of a sales consultation, right? There is the question and answer section where you're going and digging out problems and concerns the business owner has about their company. Now the second section, which this this student is very good at, he's good at the presentation. Now the presentation, all that means is like you, you're basically listening to what you heard inside of the question and answer portion, but now you're actually going and utilizing that to describe your service and talk about how you guys are actually going to work together to solve the problems I just told you about, you know, in the question and answer section. Cool. So he's really good at that because like the, the way that he does his um, accounting, he, he does a mixture of like um, a, of accounting, bookkeeping, um, virtual CFO and consulting where he will not only keep your books, but he actually goes and like looks at your systems and your processes to make sure that everything is running very efficiently. Also how to make like a better financial model so you can actually like utilize the data he gives you with um, his bookkeeping to make trend analysis, um, to see like exactly where your spend is, whether or not your marketing is doing, you know, as great of a job as what you think it's doing. And it's really, really a cool, um, you know, service that he offers because it's really, really bespoke. And it's really custom to the company that he's working with. So it's, it's just really great. And the way he can kind of describe it makes the business owners kind of be like, yes, yes, this is awesome. This is exactly what I need. Now, the third section, and this is the section where most people struggle. Um, now, if you're, if you're constantly getting people saying no to you, or, or they're just not really willing to pay the amount of money that you know you're looking to um, charge. It's generally in your Q and A and your presentation section. But 
once you start knowing that people are willing to pay you, you know, $5,000, $7,000, $8,000, the section where most people become weak at is closing. That is the third section. This is actually the section where, you know, where me and him are going to be spending most of the time for the next probably two weeks is closing. Okay, because even though he has a really good track record of people saying yes, he struggles when the people are not really gung-ho yet and they're kind of on the fence. And they say things like, I need to think about it, or I don't really know, or give me a couple weeks. I asked him specifically, I said, wait, wait, wait. So all the people that are kind of like on the fence, what did this guy specifically say? Did he, when you asked him, are you ready to get started? He said, oh, he said, I'll get started in two weeks. And I was like, what? You just let him go? He's like, yeah, he said he'll get ready, he'll, he'll be ready in two weeks. I said, no, 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 that's a smoke screen. <laughs> I was like, you have to figure out why is the person saying two weeks? Is it a budget concern? Is it a time concern? Is it that he doesn't, he's in a contract still with his current provider? Is it that the pain just isn't that deep? Is it that he doesn't really value the service? Is it that there's no urgency? Are there incentives for him to get started? What happens if he doesn't get started today? And that's when the person's like, oh, I didn't realize I was supposed to ask all that question. I was like, oh, <laughs> I think we've been taking it for granted. Which, you know, th th that's one thing to say, like, like um, you know, even though we're in the mentorship program and, you know, oftentimes, like, people would be like, you know, my coaching program, my mentorship program is perfect. For me, I mean, my, my program is, is pretty top notch. I mean, we, we have students going from like zero to 12 grand a month in under 12 months, right? Um, one of our students, she got from zero to eight grand in the past couple of weeks, and it's only been third. It's only been about forty days, right? So it, it is very, very, very high level. It's not perfect though, right? Because we are working with students, and your your relationships and your skill sets are going to evolve over time, and. <clears throat> Yeah, so your relationships and your skill sets are gonna start evolving over time. That's really what we have to kind of be aware of. So like for him, for example, his his greatest skill set was a presentation. So all we're working on now is just making sure that not only is he great at a presentation, but he can start closing. Now the hardest thing for, for him specifically is he doesn't want to be seen as pushy, right? Because because he wants to be, he wants one, he wants people to like him, but two, He's does not, he didn't know that there's actually a thing called firmness. And the analogy I like to use whenever I tell people to be like really firm is you almost have to treat these people, especially the ones when they're like, you know, um, they have either like a huge tax burden or they have a really large fast growing company they don't really know how to handle. You have to almost treat it almost like you're their parent, right? The analogy I love to use is like a parent and a child. When your child is doing crazy stuff, are you going to just let the child do crazy stuff? For example, if you know that the stove is on, or the, uh, yeah, the stove is on, and the child's gonna reach and touch his hand on the flame, are you gonna let the child touch his hand on the flame, you know, and be kind of like the nice guy friend? Or are you gonna be like, hey, don't do that. Hey, just take your hand off. Hey, that's gonna hurt you. Hey, we can't wait another week for you to like keep trying to touch your hand. We gotta stop this now. It's the same thing. It's not really about the companies liking you. That's the thing that most people get wrong when it comes to closing. Um, it, it, it's more about making sure that, I mean, because these, these people are in drastic, urgent situations and a lot of the time. They just don't really understand how urgent their situation is. And if you don't do a good enough job of the presentation, you might have to close a little bit more um, aggressively. Now, when I say aggressively, I mean, like, don't, don't be like... Uh, you know, yelling at people, arguing with people, or saying they suck, or like, you know, getting irritated or taking things personally. It's more, you should be very stern and just really talk about like why the person needs to move forward today. And that's really the key that most people just don't have. I'm sorry, my camera's like, I know the lighting's all different and all weird. Um, I'm like sitting inside of the drive through um, of this restaurant right now. Um, and yeah, that's that's the thing that nobody really understands or, or really gets right. It's like, you know, you, it's it's okay for people not to, you know, like you. You don't have to be everybody's friend. Like, if they're not going to work with you, I, I'd rather that you, they be honest and tell you exactly why they're not going to work with me rather than them be like, oh, 
two weeks from now and you're like following up with them and they just kind of goes and they just didn't want to hurt your feelings right you you need to get this stuff out in the open you have to ask the question that everybody else is afraid to ask and the one thing to note is just because you're asking questions and you're challenging them does not mean that you're being disrespectful and if you ever feel like you know you're uncomfortable and you did go a little bit too far the one thing you should do is just take the last two to five minutes of the call just calming down just talking and rebuilding that rapport so that it'll allow you to follow up with them in the future Right, so that's just the biggest thing. I just want to kind of like talk about something that that, I'm, that I was going through with a client. Um, you know, if you want some help growing inside of your the, the private mentorship program, if you want to like really avoid making all the mistakes that most people make when it comes to growing their business, like it's funny. Like you don't have to go through all those mistakes. Like you'll you'll still make some mistakes if I if we work together, but like all the stupid ones that I made, like when I was growing my firm about seven, um, I started about seven and a half years ago, but. Like, there was a lot of mistakes I could have avoided if I just had someone, you know, side by side. Um, but it took me a really long time to actually go and get a mentor because, you know, I was I was a little, really proud and I didn't want to admit that I was not the best at all this stuff. So, you know, but I eventually got a mentor. It cost a lot of money. Uh, the first year I spent like 35 grand um, on coaching, seminars, uh, courses, just anything to get my hands on in order to make sure that I never was in the position where I didn't know how to make money again. And... You know, that's what I like to offer people nowadays. So in addition to my accounting firm, I have a private mentorship program where I help walk you through step by step what you need to do to go and build a six figure either accounting business or bookkeeping business, um, whichever one you consider yourself. So if that's something that, that you think is going to help you, right, you want to make sure you can get to your goal without, you know, getting discouraged, messing up or taking way more time than what you need. Go ahead and click on the link inside the description below to book a call with me to see if I can help you inside the program. Um, now, keep in mind, the program is not for everyone. I do not accept everyone inside the program because I need to make sure specifically that you are going to be a good fit. And I absolutely know that I can actually help you get results. Because if you're not gonna get results, it doesn't make sense for us to work together. And I'll be the first to let you know that, um, so we're not wasting anyone's time. But if I do believe that I can help you, I'm just gonna let you know, I'm gonna make an offer and extend an invitation for you to join the program, if it makes sense. So if that's you, I can't wait to see you on the call. If you're not quite ready for the call, um, that's okay too. I'll see you inside the next video. Have a great one.